I want to use AirPlay 2, but I don't want to buy expensive speakers, soundbar that are built in AirPlay 2. I already have one Bluetooth speaker and the sound quality is good enough for me. I also do want to get an AirPlay 2 audio receiver like secondhand outdated AirPod Express, the Apple router, Belgian U Green AirPlay 2 receiver from other country. Those AirPlay 2 receiver are unavailable in Malaysia. The only available option is the Wheel Mini Streamer, but the price is 500 ringgit. No thanks. Then I search for an alternative solution. I found an open source software called SharePod Sync. It works like AirPlay 2 with limitations. I will explain it later and can run on a computer like Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 02 or better. For more information, you can check on the SharePod Sync GitHub repository link in the description. Due to the Raspberry Pi shortage and no one care about Malaysian markets, I will use my old laptop to install the SharePod Sync on Pop OS. Let's open the documentation. You can get the link in the description and install it together. First, open the terminal. We Run the command sudo apt update to check whether any packages or dependency need to update to the latest. The next step is optional, we can run the sudo apt upgrade command to upgrade it. After we will run the long change of command to install all the necessary tools and library. Now we install another tool called nqptp, a convenient app to SharePod Sync and provides timing information for AirPlay 2 operation. We can run this command to download the nqptp repository. Run the cd nqptp command to change the current directory into the folder. Run the auto recon command to generate the configuration script. It may take a while. Run this command to prepare the necessary setting and files for the make command. Run the make command to build the software and sudo make install to install the software. After the nqptp installation, we need the service to run on the system startup. Run sudo systemctl enable nqptp and sudo system start nqptp commands. After the nqptp installation, install shareposting is quite similar. Change the directory to root using the cd command and grab the repository with the git clone command. Change the current directory into the shareposting folder. Use auto reconfig command and wait for a while. Then run the config command. The last step run the make and make install command to install shareposting. It's time for us to test shareposting. Run the command SharePod Sync with dash V. Now I use my phone and try to airplay music to my SharePod Sync device. You can see there's option here and click it. Then the music start playing on my laptop. Everything is working so we can set the SharePod Sync start on the system startup. We can use Ctrl C to stop the SharePod Sync service. Run the systemctl enable SharePod Sync command. Then we can run the sudo systemctl start SharePod Sync to start the SharePod Sync service right away. Now are the final settings. The first thing is to disable the OS auto suspend or sip mode. Just go to the power setting and toggle to disable it. The last setting is to disable the Wi-Fi power management. The OS Wi-Fi power management may not respond to AirPlay requests when it turns into low power or inactive mode. Run the iwconfig command to check which device is in service and the power management status. In my case, the WLP5S0 is in service and the power management is on. To disable it, run this command iwconfig your device power off. SharePod Sync provides advanced configuration, but I am not deep diving into it. SharePod Sync default settings are good for me. I put a documentation link in the description, in case you need advanced configuration. The only thing I want to change is the receiver name. We can use sudo nano slash etc slash SharePod Sync dot com to use the command line text editor to edit the configuration file. In the general section, put your name in the name field, then save the file by using Control plus X and enter key. Now we can use the systemctl restart SharePod Sync command to restart the service and let it take effect. We can check the result, yup the name already changed, that's all for the installation. The last thing, we can add the SharePod Sync device into the home app. Go to the home app, tap the plus icon, tap the add accessory, tap the more option and let the apps discover the nearby device. Then we can select the SharePod Sync device and set it up accordingly. My experience using SharePod Sync is good and stable, I don't really have any issue using it. The multi-room function works correctly, I can airplay my music to the SharePod Sync device and my Hackintosh without issue. Ask Siri to play music is working fine, no any issue. The only drawback is the limited home app support. The SharePod Sync device status always show not playing even though the music is playing. At the end, I just saved some money by reusing the old device and SharePod Sync. That's all for this video, I'm John. I will see you in my next video.